Hello everyone and welcome to another Mecha Bellum tournament. Today it is the morning of the Asia tournament. We have Kaza versus Waladin. <laughs> Not just your usual paladin, this is a Waladin. Excellent. Kaza goes with the elite specialist. Oh wow, and look at that cool uh wow, both these guys have great avatars. Kaza actually ended up with the elite specialist. Let's take a look at their units now. We have two units of storm callers and a couple of arc lights. Interesting that both players are immediately setting up for the headbutt. Waladin does have the quick supply specialist, so he should be a little bit better equipped for this aggressive move. I do like both of these storm callers being right at the front, just in case your opponent sets up near the back. There's a chance for you to take an early snipe on the towers. Of course, these storm callers, this one should hit the tower immediately. These guys should be distracted by these. Um, Mustang here. Interesting, the unlock of the Steel Balls. I guess we're going to see a Steel Ball Mustang play. We haven't seen this too much in the recent meta, but I have a feeling that this might not go in the way of Waladin, just because these storm callers. Oh, they're distracted by a group of crawlers. That will at least slow down the tower drop. Man, and this is just such an aggressive headbutt. It really does a great job of just clearing this out. Let's see if that tower drops, and it does. That may spell disaster, but I think there are more than enough units here to take out, what, two arc lights and a unit of storm callers? It really shouldn't be much of a contest. And this is one of the issues that you can have with the elite specialist, is that if you set up very aggressively, your opponent might have a little bit more uh, maneuverability, a little bit more leverage to get in there and start cleaning up all of your units over time. This arc light's going to do a lot of work, clearing away a ton of crawlers. All that needs to survive is one or two of these steel balls, though, and the arc light should be doomed. Wow, the arc light might actually finish this out. Arc lights do a deceptively good amount of damage. Let's see if the steel ball can make it. No. Okay, Kaza ends up taking the first round. That was kind of what we were predicting, just because that uh, storm caller is very important here. Kaza skips, Waladin skips. Wow, two units of. Uh, Mustangs, and it looks like Kaza does eat his uh, unit of arc lights here, or sorry, unit of storm callers. Very important. And he goes with triple, yeah, triple crawlers. Those crawlers will suffer from the Mustangs if the Mustangs ever get uh, the high explosive ammo. That should just clear them away very, very quickly. I do like all of this crawler play, but we do see crawlers kind of get eaten up very quickly by Mustangs and by the likes of Vulcan and by Arc Lights. There's quite a few good answers to Crawlers. We'll have to see what they're followed up by next round for Kaza. Wilden just grabbing a couple of units of Mustang. Mustang are just really solid units. It's good to have a couple of Mustang, pretty much no matter what you're doing. These Mustangs shouldn't survive very long in this situation. He'll need to put a front line in front of them, either some tanks or most likely these Steel Balls. Um, also, oh, there they are. I was going to say, where's the crawlers in the flanks? There's the crawler in the flanks. Do we see any units? Nope. Okay, these crawlers should deal uh, just a significant amount of damage, most likely winning in this round here for Kaza again. The Mustang do a moderately good job at cleaning up all of these little crawlers. These Mustang are doomed, though. One unit of level 1 crawlers don't do a great job against one unit of level 1 Mustangs, but they won't go down very quickly if they're level 2. In fact, a level 2 unit of crawlers will clear away a level 1 unit of Mustang without much issue. Um, and this will definitely be a win here for Kaza. Those flanking units are really important. You know, if you're facing a headbutt, always try and uh, manipulate your opponent's deployments. And the easiest way to do that is to start playing units in the back lines. Uh, the oil is also an incredibly good tool to use if you're facing a headbutt, just because you're most likely gonna see several rounds throughout the game. Top supply coming out here for Walladin. What does Kaza pick? Kaza skips, okay. And grabs the high explosive ammo. Yeah, these Mustang are now pretty much doomed. Or sorry, these uh, crawlers are now pretty much doomed because the Mustang have high explosive ammo. And that missile is Walladin's as well. Okay. A lot more crawlers coming out. I wouldn't be surprised if Kaza places some more units in the flanks, but Waladin's Mustang should be able to take care of that pretty much no problem if he chooses to do so. Uh, I don't see any Mustang on the flanks. That might spell disaster. Granted, these Mustang will be able to clean up the front line so much quicker now that it really shouldn't be much of an issue. Okay, he 
grab some level 2 crawlers to fight this. Not a bad choice. This flank will go in the way of uh, Kaza, but, you know, that that's a lot of units that this one unit of crawlers is going to have to clear up. I don't think that's going to go their way, especially since a couple of these steel balls survive. Once these steel balls start to level, it will really help Waladin. Just having a lot more HP on the field will be huge. Of course, these Mustang... Oh... They're going to come online a little bit too early. If they've been slowed a little bit longer, that may have been useful, but even this mini Mustang shouldn't have much problem cleaning up a couple units of arc lights. Yeah, they'll die, but those steel balls should be able to fix this. Hopefully. Hopefully the steel balls will come online here in a second. Ooh, it's going to be closer than you would think. Those level 2 um, crawlers are actually doing a lot of work here. Kaza, oh my gosh. <laughs> Waladin, that must be annoying, seeing a sea of your units, everything shooting at the wrong thing, having his tower drop, that's rough, but this is exactly the plays I want to see here from KZA, just having, or Kaza as I've been calling him, just having those units going in and doing different flanks, it's super important, it's very effective, looks like Waladin just does mass upgrading across the field, will he eventually just play a unit of Mustang, no, it's going to be, he's fighting crawlers with crawlers, which, although, I mean, it will work, but fighting fire with fire is an interesting choice when he has access to a bucket of water. Um, oh, and here comes the rhino. There are not a lot of steel balls on the floor, and these Mustangs will not be able to kill two level two rhinos at, really at any point in time. These guys are not dealing a lot of damage. 21 damage a shot. These level two rhinos coming in with 44,000 HP. Oh my. Oh my, oh my. Well, at least Walladin, uh, although he didn't place a unit of Mustang here, I would have liked to have seen these crawlers supported somewhat. Uh, those Mustang, or these Rhinos will definitely spell a doom for a unit of Mustang and also for these towers. Luckily, the Rhinos aren't moving too quick yet. Once they get this mechanical rage, boy oh boy do they move quickly, especially if you give them the whirlwind. Then crawlers and small units just don't become an issue. These Mustangs should clear away these crawlers, then turn on the Rhino, um, which the Rhino will have to go through a, just a bunch of crawlers, as well as these Mustangs. So this guy might drop. Might drop. It's not guaranteed. Down go the storm crawlers. They do land one rocket. Oh, these Mustang or these Rhinos. This Rhino has a ton of HP still. It's gonna be an issue. Wow! The level three crawlers easily able to clean up those level twos. Luckily, this Rhino is being melted by a couple of Steel Balls, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And these Level 1 Steel Balls never seeing an upgrade, they're really going to suffer. He needs these Level 2 Steel Balls to come online and deal the damage very quickly. These Crawlers don't stand much of a chance. Who's, oh, they're chasing after a couple of Crawlers that are at the tower. Will the tower drop in time? Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, no, the Rhino. The Rhino's just too powerful. This is a great choice from KZA. Really, really good place here. He's realized that, hey, that that headbutt is very powerful and can turn into something really dangerous. So I just got to keep Walladin on the back foot. He's winning. They're small cuts, but they're starting to add up. And this is just really great play. Both players skip. Man, the skipping is happening so quickly. I'm not even really getting much of a chance to see what units are being deployed. There's the steel balls in answer to uh, the rhinos. They should work exceedingly well against the Rhinos. Uh, unfortunately, without the um, range upgrade, these Rhinos, if they were to get uh, the Whirlwind, could easily clear away a unit of Steel Balls. Um, in fact, yes, there it is. There's the Whirlwind. These Rhinos are going to be absolutely devastating. Wow, we'll see if they actually make it in. I do like the choice of a couple of Arc Lights here from Kaza. Level 2 Arc Lights actually hit kind of hard. As you saw earlier, these uh, arc lights were able to start clearing away the steel balls. Granted, this arc light's now level two, this steel ball's now level three, but in nine shots, arc lights tend to kill off a unit of steel balls, and they do have good splash. Yeah, so it's not uncommon if your arc light can be protected, as we've seen throughout this game, for it to do a significant amount of damage, just because they do fire so quickly. Here's the missile. Should slow down the rhino long enough for these steel balls to get in there and kill it. Yep, looks like they're going to both be cleared away. Really good choice there with that missile. Uh, 
Waladin's used a lot of money on missiles uh, throughout this game, but I think they're starting to pay off. Really good placements on those missiles throughout this game have helped a lot. And this is going to be the win that Waladin's been waiting for. KZA or Kaza's been just slowly pushing Waladin with tiny, tiny cuts throughout the game, keeping him on the back foot. This is where this uh, Steel Ball Mustang can really start to push back. Waladin inflicts a huge amount of damage. Hopefully over the next couple of rounds, he'll be able to continue this pressure at least for... Oh man, and that's a huge pickup for Waladin. Speed Specialist is very, very good. Uh, Speed Specialist, of course, works a little bit better on units that originally move somewhat slower. So Speed Specialist with a Fortress um, suddenly makes the Fortress much more threatening. But Speed Specialist is just, in my opinion, one of the best specialists in the game. Especially when you're playing a very fast, aggressive build like this. It just means that all of these units can tear through the front line very quickly, get into these back towers. It could be the difference between life and death for a lot of these guys. Kaza looks like he opted to skip again, though. Uh, interesting choice. Going with a lot of arc lights. And now that these steel balls are really making a show for themselves, it might not go in the way of KZA or Kaza. It's going to be tough. I'd love to see him play out the sticky oil. He has the cash. Playing oil down the front would just give him time for these crawlers to deal a little bit of damage, but more importantly for these arc lights to get a couple more shots off. If any of you are familiar with uh, StarCraft II, this is basically just a Zerg rush at the front, which needs to be blunted. It's a Zerg rush with very fast tanks, um, and that, that's scary. Uh, I don't really know what else Kaza could be doing given this hand. I would love to see him play out a couple of Vulcan with either some oil or some fire. Same with these Stormcallers. Stormcallers with fire at the back just to try and clear away some of these units in the back line, the true damage dealers. But investing heavily in these crawlers makes it very difficult. Very, very difficult. And now, although this uh, Rhino did have the Photon Coating, Photon Coating does not protect against slow. Looks like some of these crawlers are going to make it in, but the, uh, the different layers of fire here for Waladin are very important. Because his units are spaced out very well, that means that the crawlers go in, they have to kill a unit, and the Mustang in the back are still able to fire. And that's it. Another good amount of damage coming on to Kaza, basically evening out the game. Kaza needs to make a shift. These arc lights and uh, crawlers aren't really doing a great job. Waladin and Kaza both skip. Mass upgrades across the field. Ooh, that's what I was looking for. There we are. KZA ends up picking up a couple of fantastic overlords. These things are going to absolutely decimate the lines. Now, a little worrying to have your overlords so close to the front, just because a melting point can easily uh, get in there and clear these guys out, especially given how flimsy this front line is. But it will catch him on, uh, should catch Waladin unawares, given that he doesn't have any giant killing units out. The only thing that shoots up right now are these Mustang, and these Mustang are dealing 43 damage a shot. Um, I hate to say it, Overlords have 35,000 HP uh, with the Overlord artillery. They should be able to annihilate these Steel Balls very quickly. For those who don't know, Overlord artillery works exceedingly well against uh, single entity units, units with a lot of HP, because it doesn't have a great amount of splash damage, but it does deal a very good amount of direct damage, that 12,000 damage easily should be able to start clearing away some of these steel balls. And you know what? Overlords just hit pretty hard themselves. Um, they shoot those four missiles that deal 7,882 damage each. Down goes ooh, the first Overlord. Man, these level 3 Rhinos are eventually able just to get in there and start plinking away. There isn't enough front line. There needs to be a unit of tanks or maybe some steel balls of his own. Those poor Overlords getting just chipped apart. Great plays here by Walladin. That rush is still enough. If there's a critical mass of Overlords, they can work. And this was a good choice. With the portable shield as well. That's a lot of extra HP. Heavy hackers coming out for Walladin with the shields. Now this is, I believe, just here to absorb some shots, just to keep these Mustang up and running. Not a bad choice whatsoever. We'll see if there can become enough. Oh, that's huge. A lot of extra HP on these overlords and uh, the deflection of 120 damage a shot. Yeah, these little Mustang are only shooting for 64 damage a pop. 
We'll have to see if the Overlords can even take damage at this point. Uh, I don't know if they will be able to take damage. It always seems to me like my unit shouldn't be taking damage when they have this armor enhancement, but somehow they still do. Um, for those in the comments who know, please let us know. Man, I love this coming out here from Waladin. Just grabbing all of the extra tech that they can, as well as getting some of these crucial techs. I, the armor enhancement or the defense enhancement may be useful, especially for the steel balls, but the rest of his army is so flimsy that there isn't really a huge point to getting the defense enhancement. Uh, you know, 15% of 10 is not very much. 15% of 10,000? Okay, now you're talking, but... The overlords are taking... I don't think they're taking any damage, period. Yeah, so we see that uh, KZA here should win by, what, four overlords? 2,000 damage? No, I'm an idiot. 1,600 damage? That's a good amount. It'll put Walladin right back in the danger zone. Uh, fantastic plays here. How does Walladin beat this? He either plays out some uh, more units that shoot up, maybe even some snipers, but I think a melting point is probably the best bet. We see here that the overlords were the only thing standing for a very long period of time. That's more than enough time for those melting points to get online and clear out the overlords. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue here. Uh, underground threat for Waladin. A very good idea. A very, very good idea. Wow. Okay. And it looks like Kaza does just skip again. Nope. Grabs the underground threat as well. Both players should be trading towers here very quickly. Uh, I would be interested to see if either player just plays an arc light or a missile in their back line. Both would be a good choice. Waladin's in a tough spot, though. He needs to... I don't know. Still no melting points. And these overlords are starting to level up. We can see at least two of them get to level three. That basically cuts down everything. Uh... Mm. Okay, both players think it's the end of the game. We've seen Walladin burn the Midnight Oil a few times throughout the game. I... I don't know if he's going to be able to survive this. The Mustangs are level 3. They're now doing 103 damage a shot, so they should still not be able to hurt the Overlords. Um, a very interesting choice. There's some Crawlers in the back line. Good choice. I... Oh, and Kasa chooses to play these guys in his own back line. Okay. Honestly, I kind of like this. He feels powerful enough that he can keep that front line running and play some overlords in the back line. One, to clean up any underground threat, but two, to come in as a second wave. Just in case melting points were the big threat, these overlords may be able to clear away any of those units that did make it through that initial rush and then focus down the melting point. Overlords with the artillery can do quite well against um, melting points. They're not always perfect, but they can do quite well against it. Uh, I, again, don't think that there's anything that can hurt these overlords, though. So, eventually, uh, Kaza will win. KZA, congratulations. You're advancing to the next round. This is why it's important to recognize threats. When all of a sudden these overlords start becoming just too much to manage, uh, you gotta play out either a giant killer or something that can at least deal a little bit of damage to them. Wow, even some of the arc lights surviving. Level 4 arc lights. GG, congratulations to both players. Very back and forth. I really liked that comeback. We'll see you in the next round. Round two. We have Fresh Pro versus 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two, two, two. Uh, let's take a look and see. Man, I actually really like this Aerial Specialist. Just because if you pair this with a couple of Phoenix or even an early Overlord, this could be really powerful. Giant Spec also looks pretty good there. We see 222 grab the Marksman instead. Oh, and what did Fresh Pro grab? Supply Specialist. Okay, if you haven't already, please check out Fresh Pro's uh, live stream. He actually does a very good job, and we've seen Fresh Pro show off both how aggressive he can be and how well he can play the game from the back line. It looks like we're setting up for a little bit more subtle of a push here, and Fresh Pro opts to grab anti-air in the form of Fang. Now, Fang don't make the best anti-air at the beginning of the game just because they tend to be the thing that's shot out, shot at first, but they do make a great front line. So over time, these Fang may be enough to actually be your dedicated anti-air, but in the beginning rounds of the game, they don't work exceedingly well as anti-air units, but 
it could go his way. We have enough lane clear, or at least chaff clear, in the form of the arc lights for Fesh Pro. We still have $200 left on the field for our red player, 2222. Uh, that could be anything. A couple extra crawlers might actually be enough. No, we see Fang unlocked, but crawlers are played. Interesting choice, and these crawlers in the back. One at the front, one at the back. I do like to have my units come in in different waves, just because it's very likely that the sniper will be able to clear away a couple of these arc lights. If those arc lights are cleared away, then all of a sudden these crawlers will be able to get online and deal a ton of damage. These arc lights are going to be feasting initially, though. There isn't really a lot of units here to kill off all of these fang. In fact, some of the fang even make it through those three waves of, um, of crawlers. But you know what? Now the sniper's online, and this is why it's good to have units coming in in different waves. Now there's enough crawlers here to get online, start messing with those storm callers. Will they take out the sniper? They do. Uh, that's actually pretty important. This arc light may be able to clear away the crawlers. May. Just because these, yeah, these phoenix are more than enough. And that's why it's important to have a couple of flying units. Even if your build doesn't have a, a real use for flying units, I love to just in, to incorporate one or two units of flyers. Let's say you're playing the fang build, or you're playing tanks, or heck, you might even be going heavily into giants that are ground-based. Just throw in a unit of wasps or a unit of phoenix. It can catch your opponent off guard, and now they have to spec into something else that shoots up. And if those units that, let's say you ha they have some Mustang or something, take five seconds to kill off your Phoenix. You know what? That's five seconds that they're not shooting at units that you actually care about. It's a little expensive. You know, and Mechabellum is one of those games where you can't just be deploying units all the time. Both players actually unlocking the field recovery and going with deployables here. You see the photon coding and haste module. Uh, but... Because Mechabellum only allows you to play a certain number of units around, it does make that shift a little bit harder. But if you can find the space for it in your build, incorporating a flyer or two is very powerful. Not only that, it can catch your opponent out. So in this case, 222 realizes that the Phoenix aren't going to be a big part of his build, opts to uh, recycle one of those Phoenix to earn a little bit of extra cash. That way they can play units that they actually want. And it looks like it's going to be a lot of crawlers and some storm callers. Okay. These Stormcallers should do well, and I like this. Because 222 doesn't have a great unit to put this Photon Coating on, he might as well slap it on the unit that he's most likely going to recycle next turn, just so that you can get the Photon Coating back. Not only that, it will make the Phoenix a little bit more durable, especially against Light Fire, like what comes out from Mustang and from Fang. Once again, these Crawlers are just here to die, but they do hold the line very well, and those are some great Stormcaller shots. Phoenix are able to absorb a lot more damage than usual just because they had that photon coating. Um, and actually just having this one Phoenix in the air should be able to snipe out. Well, it's taking a little while to kill that arc light. This could actually go very badly. Good Stormcaller shots are going to be necessary to clean this up. Luckily everybody was distracted by just a single crawler. But Stormcallers generally don't have the uh, wherewithal to shoot moving units. The sniper dropping here is very important as well. Oh, uh, the Stormcallers are kind of lined up to potentially... Go oh, no, they don't. If they had gone after the, the tower, they may have been able to survive this. I think they still might. Those Fang are taking their time getting in. And Fang, I think, just rests slightly outside of the kill box. Wow! What was that? Two Fang survived? Very, very interesting plays. Uh, let's see. Does 222 just immediately annihilate the Phoenix? I think so, especially if he goes with the, both players going with Senior Manufacturing Specialist. Okay, looks like we're going to see a lot of Giants. Uh, what would work well here for either player? I guess a Vulcan would do quite well. Um, Overlords could do well. Maybe a Fortress, but I don't really see much of a use of a Fortress. There goes the Phoenix. Having that Photon Coating is very important. Yeah, honestly, a, a Vulcan would do very well here. Fresh Pro grabs a couple more Crawlers and Mustang. Is it going to be a third unit? Or is he going to unlock a Vulcan and possibly play it out? Okay. Looks like neither player is overly interested in playing their Giants yet. Did I read that correctly? Yes, both players did grab the Senior Manufacturing Specialist, but I think both players have realized, eh, you know, uh, Giant isn't really a great answer at this point, honestly. 
uh, if the Stormcallers just had some incendiary bombs, that would work very well at cleaning away a lot of these units, especially units like this. I like to call this the pocket. So you have a left-hand pocket and a right-hand pocket. Even when your research center is destroyed, your units can't go directly through it. They will still flow around it. So units in this little pocket get uh, AoE damage becomes much, much uh, more dangerous for them just because they, they're stuck there. And if there's a unit over to the left, they'll all drive through fire. So if you see your opponent play a lot of units in the pocket, that's when you want to start dropping fire. Ooh, and this oil is actually going to be incredibly important. You see how all of these units are resting in it? Next turn, if the Stormcallers do grab fire or a Vulcan is played, all of these units would die. Of course, there isn't really much that isn't melee for both players or very short ranged, so... That fire could spell disaster in the form of a lot of friendly fire, but, you know, it is what it is. This little arc light probably won't be able to get online to actually kill the sniper before uh, the tower wears off. No, it doesn't. Let's see if the Stormcallers are able to take out the rest of these Mustangs. Luckily, the Mustang should be a little distracted by the Marksmen. Marksmen don't have a ton of HP, but that guy was level 3, so he could take a few extra shots. I think, once again, this will go in the way of 222. But last time I was wrong with that prediction. I tend to overcalculate how good Stormcallers can be, but in this case, they did work out. Very small wins and losses for both players so far. This is looking pretty dangerous. Now if there's fire. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, the incendiary bomb. Okay, there's almost guaranteed fire possibilities. Fresh Pro grabs the subsidized Mustangs. And, well, those Mustangs are very vulnerable to things like fire, especially from a Vulcan. And both players can deploy Vulcan a little bit less expensively than usual. We'll see. Does 222 grab it? I did see a unit get shoot away here. Uh, I think it was the extra arc light that was just deleted. And more Mustang. Wow. With range and damage increase, those Mustang will all die, though. They should be slightly outside of the fire range, but they still will have to close with these Stormcallers. And when they go to close with the Stormcallers, they will all pretty much burn. That's unfortunate. Having the extra damage on these Mustang is kind of important later in the game if we do see a lot of uh, Vulcan come down, just because they should outrange the Vulcan at least initially, um, and they'll deal a little bit more damage to it. Vulcan do have a ton of HP, so Mustangs take a little while to clear them out. Oh, and it looks like tanks are the answer. Tanks are a great answer to Vulcan. Uh, granted, these Mustang or tanks are a great answer to, but yeah, to Vulcan, but also to Mustang. Um, these tanks don't have any upgrades yet. Um, maybe if he plays out another round of them, I think he will. Yes. Okay. Now, if these tanks get range, they become much, much more dangerous. And it looks like everybody's. Ooh, I like the shield. Shield's going to be crucial here. Uh, now everybody's going to be punching above their weight. Let's see if the fire is enough. Oh, yes. All of these Mustangs will burn. In fact, yeah, we're hoping that the rest of these units, or at least uh, 222 is probably hoping that those units come in slowly. Man, the tanks without range, though. They're going to start to be devastated by these Mustangs. But this is what's important, is that the Mustangs are all going to drive into the fire. <laughs> this is why it's very important to be careful when you deploy your units in the pocket. There's not really a lot of things that you can do to get around it. But when your units are in the pocket and there's fire, they tend to just travel into the fire. It's really frustrating when that happens. Fresh Bro skips. Ooh, orbital bombardment coming out for 222. There's the hackers. Will the hackers grab shields? Three hackers with shields. This should protect against the fire somewhat. Somewhat, somewhat. And they, the hackers work fairly well against things like sledgehammers. Uh, medium entity units or medium health units with low entities. That's pretty much what your hacker is designed to do, unless you give it the multiple control. Then it can work very well against things like crawlers and fang. You know what? Even the multiple control on things like sledgehammers and steel balls, it's okay, as long as you have enough meat to support the hackers. But at that point, I, I think it's better just to grab a unit of storm crawlers or a fortress, uh, just because it will clear those units away significantly quicker. All right, many, many tanks. Ooh, mechanical rage. Once they get the range enhancement or the electromagnetic shot, all of a sudden these Mustang will be a lot less powerful. But the mechanical rage is also very important because tanks have such a long um, interval of attack 
going down to three seconds. Granted, originally they have four and a half second uh, attack interval times. It's so ridiculously slow. You need your tanks to be shooting a little bit quicker. It's just, it lets them cut through shields a lot faster. It turns them into actually viable units, in my opinion. Orbital Bombardment is actually working quite well here. It doesn't feel like it's doing a great job, but because it's just pounding away at these shields, oh my god, and then two shots. Two shots clearing everything away. That is just exactly what you want. These background crawlers are doing a surprisingly good amount of uh, shielding for the rest of these units, and that's why it's so important to have your units come in at a lot of different waves. Man, these tanks able to deal a ton of damage. Fresh Pro is really hurting here against 222. Fresh Pro's now in the danger zone. Let's see if he can bring it back. These Stormcaller tanks and crawlers is a very good job. If you haven't looked already, go check out my tank build where I explain how to use tanks to the best of their abilities. 222 grabs the range specialist. At one, uh, medium units benefit from the range specialist hugely and long ranged units benefit from it hugely. Of course, all your units want to have extra range. The more range you have on any unit is very important, but uh, I think it works best for units like Stormcaller's tanks, um, Steel Balls, those kinds of units that just benefit from having a little bit more range. If your sniper goes from 180 range to 192 range, great. You know, it's not as big of an impact. Here's the Vulcan for Fresh Pro. Finally, we see this giant specialist utilized question is will it be enough it should be able to clear away these crawlers fairly quickly and then maybe these hackers will be able to do the uh do the damage that they need to do in order to start converting these tanks but there's a fortress on the field now fortress with barrier fortress tank sledgehammer Ooh, hey and the phoenix are back oh it's always nice to see a flying unit pop out i think 222 is hearing me through the internet what can happen, which this is a, a bad play right now, but what can happen is just having those Phoenix ready to go into the flank is also very important. Just always having that threat. Granted, Mustang are usually deployed on the flanks to try and uh, dissipate that threat, but uh, this is not looking great. This is not looking great for either player. It could very much go either way. I think right now Flesh Pro does have quite the edge though, as these hackers are slowly dealing enough damage to start converting tanks. They're going to really suffer against the fortress, but you know what? That shouldn't be much of an issue now that all the front line is gone. Man, and look at those Mustang, eventually able to plink away. And with the uh, addition of these uh, anti-missiles, uh, the deployable anti-missile sentries, that really does neuter Stormcallers. You basically need uh, one Stormcaller unit to one anti-missile unit. Oh, it looks like 222 is trying to close out the game with some lightning all right if he can win the left he's going to be in a much better position i'd like to see these tanks grab range but instead we see double fortress okay well this fortress did perform fairly well last turn it did 24,673 damage putting it at the allied top one uh that's that's pretty good uh, that, that is very good and overall it's already at silver or allied top three showing how much damage a fortress can do fortresses have gotten a bad rap recently i've been seeing them played more and more um, and that you know isn't a bad thing i really do think that the range increase on fortresses is very important or the rocket punch have one or the other just because it does it does uh, help mitigate the fortress not having a lot of uh, aoe damage okay and it looks like these Stormcallers are coming out here on the left. Stormcallers are a great answer to the hackers. Fresh Pro has a very good army, but he's still sitting on 1,200. Now down to a... Oh, he's playing it out. Oh, and it's going to be Stormcallers of his own. This is a great choice by Fresh Pro. There really isn't any anti-air... Or, sorry, anti-missile on the field. Um, the only thing that Stormcallers really struggle against are fast units and air. And, uh, yeah, those, those Phoenix are gone. So, I think think Fresh Pro has a very good chance of pushing this one out as well. Lots of level 2 units. The shield should hold for a very long time. There's the Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm doesn't affect units that are within the shield. Once they're out of the shield, though, ooh, no. It all goes south. Will these units be slowed down long enough by their own oil? They are. 
they don't all get eaten by the uh, by the lightning storm. So at least there'll be a little bit more of a pushback. Man, fortresses converting. That's not what you want to see. <laughs> oh, there's killers in your own ranks. Down goes the tower. Will it be enough? I don't think so. There's barely any units here. These these hackers are starting to drop, but without the range, these tanks are really going to suffer. The range is the second most crucial... Uh, oh, no. I think the range is very crucial on sledgehammers. I think 222 might die here. Yes, he does. Wow, great plays by Fresh Pro. Very much a back and forth game once again. Congratulations to both players. We'll see you in the next round. If you guys have been enjoying the tournaments, please be sure to like and subscribe. We have a lot of great stuff on the channel right now. Let's take a look at Rat versus his blue opponent. Rat, I believe, was at the top of the leaderboard before this, so he's the one uh, he's sitting at the top of the tournament currently. We've seen Rat play before many times. Uh, ooh, wow. That is he's got a great set of opening cards. Jeez. Uh, let's see what his blue opponent does pick up to combat it. Um, I think this elite specialist could do quite well. This cost control specialist is very strong as well. Rat believes so too. It looks like the steel balls and arc lights with cost control specialist for Rat versus our red player who's going to have the elite specialist. Okay. Not bad choices by either player. This elite specialist is a little handicapped at first uh, against Rat's forces. Rat has a pretty good anti tank and crawler build it all comes down to the playments of course Ooh, and a couple of crawlers of his own for rat i do like that quite a bit and he has the extra hundred does he immediately go into the attack or defense enhancement or does he leave off i tend to choose to leave off but i have seen a lot of players argue that you can play out your two units and then immediately grab the defense enhancement which completely offsets the cost control specialists uh, health reduction and actually gives you a little bit more HP than re the rest of your opponent's units it's not a bad choice but I haven't I haven't really experimented much on my own time to see which one I prefer these crawlers might come in at the right point in time to save these arc lights on the left and right but the arc light in the center is almost certainly doomed not before he munches on these crawlers if the crawlers are left there though Oh, no, they're going to be spaced out quite far to the back. Yeah, having those crawlers way at the front is a really bad decision, especially if they're being followed in by very slow units because their lives are almost always forfeit. This little arc light that could, though, he's, he's definitely going down, which will allow this sniper to get online against all of the heavy units. This is going to be a big issue. Once all of these uh, steel balls die, there's nothing really here that can deal with these tanks. Uh, this is really a deployment issue. This sniper is going to do extremely well, and this is where the cost control specialist can really make a big difference, um, or the elite specialist too, just because, hey, now I have a level 2 sniper that can clean up literally all of your single entity units, or your small entity units, and there's not really much that can be done about it. It really came down to a deployment thing on this. Both players now have even HP for all intents and purposes. Rat just needs to put some units out in the front. Actually, hey, Assault Fang wouldn't do poorly on that. Rat actually opts for the Heavy Hacker. Interesting choice. Will our red... Well, will the red player as well? He could go with Heavy Hackers and Fang. That, that would be the Fang build. Starting with the Heavy Hacker, level 2 Fang, level 2 Hackers. That's very powerful. Instead, Rat grabs two units of Stormcrawlers. Ooh, and a good unit of Crawlers here. I would imagine these crawlers are going to be near the front. Yes, they'll be decimated by the tanks, but you know what? That's okay. It just gives the storm callers time to shoot. And storm callers are a moderately good answer against sledgehammers. They're not great, but they, they do well enough. Instead, we see some level 2 Mustang. Ooh, but our red player did grab the heavy hackers. I do like that. These level 2 Mustang, they might not do as well as you'd think because these arc lights do fire very quickly. They won't be one-shotting as much, but... Oh, wow. They actually chewed through that that unit of arc light there very quickly. Man, real killers, these Mustang. I don't know if they'll be enough, uh, especially if the Stormcallers do land a couple of shots in their midst. It looks like one or two barrages do make it in. Eh, it's not, not too bad. Not, not too bad. Those Mustangs actually did surprisingly well, at least better than I thought they would. But I think, I think this will be Doom as now there aren't very many of these uh, Mustang left, and there is still a hacker and some steel balls. 
and a few crawlers left over. But that's the important part of having those uh, level 2 Mustang is that they can absorb a little bit more damage. But more importantly, they put out a heck of a lot more damage. Mustang are a little bit more glass cannony than most people I think are considering them to be. Enhancement module. This is powerful for our uh, red player just because his units are already coming out at level 2. If he grabs a level 2, I don't know, Vulcan, level 2 hacker, something along those lines, and then it gets to level 3 quickly, maybe within a round or so, it really does pay off. I wonder if Rat will go with the incendiary bomb. We'll see here. Ooh, here's the hackers. I think instead of the hacker Fang, we might see hacker Mustang, which in my opinion is the, the evolution of the, the Fang build. Mustang, there there's a few, they're, they're a little bit less units within or entities within the unit compared to fang but they're so much quicker they deal a lot more damage and they have more hp i think mustang are just slightly better fang uh, at least in my opinion and with the heavy hacker what's the uh, hacker moving at 13 compared to the mustang moving at 16 it can keep up fairly well so if you give it the shield all of a sudden these um these mustang are able to survive considerably longer I like this quite a bit. I often put my hackers at the front. Oh, Rat did go with the fire. I thought he might. Um, I often do put my hackers in front of um, my Mustang just because they aren't quite as quick. Um, and then maybe even place a unit of Fang in front of the hackers following that. Oh, wow. We see hackers come down for Rat as well. Interesting. Now, in the hacker war, Rat should lose. But... But these hackers will do quite well at converting things to life to tanks. Oh no. Hackers hacking hacker. I still don't think it will win though. That's no bueno. Okay. Well, the right side went pretty much the way that we thought. All the action is here on the left. The center will collapse. These uh, Stormcallers are doing a fantastic job. Luckily the, uh, for Rat, he already has some Stormcallers on the field. And one of the best answers to... Uh, hacker builds are storm callers just because they have the range to get in there and deal with it hackers are somewhat flimsy they're not exactly the flimsiest units on the field but uh, they do suffer quite a bit from storm caller shots and you know what else suffers quite a bit from storm caller shots are mustang now mustang have an innate ability in their tech choices to get rid of storm caller shots as well as the new deployable being quite good at taking care of storm caller shots so we have seen storm callers become a little bit less useful within the meta recently However, Stormcallers still deal with the build quite well. Especially if you just have like an absurd amount of them. Wow, range specialist versus deployment specialist. Our red player grabs the range immediately. Rat, yeah, I was gonna say he might opt for the deployment specialist just because he's already a cost control specialist. Having the ability to play out three of these hackers or even three units of Stormcallers. Oh, opts for a mixture. Two hackers and one Stormcaller, it's very important. The range might be a little bit more useful for our red player though, just because these Mustang having extra range is great. And in a hacker war, the hacker that shoots first tends to win. Oh, unless of course these guys are level two, <laughs> then that's very good. But I do like these storm callers here on the left. Let's see if our red player tries to neuter the storm caller shots that are entering the battlefield. It looks like they opted to uh, eradicate their little Mustang to recycle, or Mustang, excuse me, the marksman in the center. Um, just so that they could play out a different unit. I... Ooh, a flying unit. If they had any flying unit, they would win. Though, if our red player has realized it, I would recommend that they unlock the Overlord this turn and then maybe play a bunch next turn. Because there's literally nothing that shoots up here for Rat. Uh, but we'll see. Man, these hackers with shields are really very quite good. Look at that, just absorbing so much of that damage. Here comes the Stormcaller shots. Man, those shields last a long time. Level 1 Stormcallers, not quite able to get through these level 2 hacker shields. But once they do, man, do they make a mockery of these poor little Mustang in the center. Ooh, and even the Arclight getting a little busy taking out tanks. Will the hackers hack the hacker? They do! Man, that's not something you see every day. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh no! But the hackers have converted each other again. Wow. I wonder how many times hackers can change hands. I guess infinitely. If both players have a level one hacker at full health and they shoot each other at the same time, 
I guess the round ends in a draw and both players will take some damage. Rat might opt for the top supply specialist here or the giant hunter. No, instead goes with the smoke. Oh, and there's the phoenix. They're not the overlords that I was hoping for, but granted, overlords are very expensive. Um, and that's why the elite specialist has a little bit more of a problem transitioning. Rat realizes it and grabs phoenix of his own. Man, I'm not streaming this. I never stream the tournaments. Um, and even if I did, they'd be a minute and a half behind. But Rat is just making counterplay after counterplay. Really good job. And not even dedicating fully to the phoenix. Just continuing to push the build that's working but making those slight adjustments to ensure that the build isn't caught out. I like this quite a bit. Two Phoenix should be enough to deal with the one, and especially with a couple of extra hackers here just to provide that shielding. I'd like to see these Stormcallers get a level, but I understand why they're not being leveled up, just because if the Mustangs start shooting down missiles or if a lot of the um, missile interceptors are played, Stormcallers see a massive decrease in their DPS. Looks like a few more hackers coming out here for our red player. It's round five. Rat has just been dominating this game. Let's see how the Stormcaller shots land. Ooh, there's the missile interceptor. Very important. The smoke is going to land as well. That should cut down all of these Mustangs for quite a while. Oh, and some ha or some crawlers from the side here. Just to distract these units, the Phoenix aren't shooting down the units that they need to. Oh, this looks very, very good here for our red player. Hackers are trying to convert each other. Uh, if, a, if this hacker on the right gets converted, we could see a swing. But it looks like the left will go in the way of our red player. Especially if the hackers continue to convert each other. Uh, very awkward. <laughs> it kind of slows the entire fight down as units continue to transition. Um, yep, everybody just, just stopping to trade hands over this guy. And honestly, that's buying a lot of time here. For the rest of Rat's units to re-engage on the battlefield. Oh, no. I don't think it's going to be enough, though, for Rat. I think that our red player has this one. I think those crawlers on the flank really made a huge difference. Uh, very, very well played. Yes, Rat does take a significant amount of damage. He'll now be able to respond to these crawlers, but honestly, these backlines have been open for both players for quite a long time. Oh, my. Improved overlords. That's that's a lot. Or even these crawlers at level 5 is kind of fun. No, I don't think either player wants to go for it. Oh, wow. Rat says, you know what? If I, if I convert your hacker, I want it to be on my team forever. Okay. I like that. I really like that. Uh, we'll see how well it goes. Uh, we see mass increases of hackers across the field for both players. Rat's already out of cash. Rat burned the Midnight Oil. He just wants to win the game here with mass hackers. It could work. If something could come online to take out these missiles, Rat would be in a much better position. Currently, he's not quite there yet. But soon, soon he could be. What does our red player pick up? I do like... Yes, level 3 Phoenix and another set of level 2 Phoenix. The only thing that shoots up right now for Rat are these level 1 Phoenix. And they're going to take a couple of shots to kill a level 2 Phoenix. Even a level 3 Phoenix. Um, hmm. This could be bad here for Rat. He might win the initial engagements, but end up losing the war just because there's nothing else that really shoots up. And these Phoenix are somewhat exposed now. Oh, it's not looking good. Here come the Crawlers. The crawlers are making their way into from the flank. They're delaying quite a bit, but those level 3 Mustang are able to clear them up very quickly. The hackers aren't getting online to convert each other fast enough. Oh, no. Rat is being overwhelmed on the left. He may still win on the right, where there's a few less uh, units, but it's not looking great. Able to convert those level 3 Mustang on side. Will the hackers be enough to hack each other? I would think so. He'll enter into this with three hackers, but nothing else that shoots up. That's going to be the end of that. Man, these Phoenix are doing a great job. Down goes the tower, but it's still not going to be enough. What is this little guy doing? Oh, he was, he was doing the attack animation. He just wasn't showing off. Oof. Rat takes a lot of damage there. A lot, a lot of damage. Able to bring it back together. Let's see if Rat can convert. I don't know if the mass hacker plays are the way to go anymore, though. Rat does have the fire online this round. Our red player doesn't have any deployables to use. 
Rat grabs the portable shield. I wouldn't be surprised if our red player did as well. We'll see. That shield is going on the level 2 hacker. There's the fire from behind. Um, okay. Oh, finally. These storm colors will be firing a little bit quicker. Really, what we need to see is mass storm color. I would like it if they were level 3. Or level 2 or level 3. And some units that shoot up here for rat. You just can't do everything all at once. I think Rat just needs to try and survive this round and then grab some more dedicated anti-air. Oh my, it's not... This fire will help. Don't get me wrong, it will help clear away some of these crawlers because what's going to happen is that these hackers will have to move forward probably just a foot, but that foot might be enough for some of this fire to land. At least the fire in the center will land to clean up one unit of crawlers. It's not great, but it's something. Our red player, ooh, deploying even more hackers. And I like spreading out these phoenix. The phoenix can't respawn. I do like to have the respawning phoenix available. I understand why some players choose not to play it. I personally just like to have it because I have had a couple of swing games where all of a sudden my one phoenix brings back 10 phoenix, and that just feels good. Um, but I do like to have my phoenix with the electromagnetic shot as well just because then they're able to tag down units and not get sniped back. Let's see if the fire lands. Yes, the fire will land. So that's one dead unit of crawlers. Potentially, yeah, one and a half. Not bad. Here's the mass storm caller shots. Easily able to start dealing with these shields. And that's very, very important. Oh, the right isn't looking as good as it normally has, though, for Rat. Here comes a lot of detonations. Missile goes off to try and clear away some of these units. Man, these level three hackers are tough, though. We're seeing a slight breakthrough on the left and right sides. The center is holding for Rat, but not for long. The death of that tower should spell disaster, and it looks like our red player will take the game and advance through the tournament. Very interesting mass hacker builds from both players. I really think these Phoenix were the, uh, the key, though. Uh, very high-level hackers and very high-level Phoenix. Just able to shoot down those hackers extremely quickly. Great plays by both players. We'll see in the next round. This is the finals, everyone. We have Fresh Pro versus our potentially red or blue player. They tend to swap sides. Ooh, Supply Specialist for our blue or red player. Interesting. Steel Ball and Fang. What does Fresh Pro pick up? This Rhino Specialist looks very powerful. Has a lot of HP, and I do like this Aerial Specialist as well. These are both pretty good. Speed with a lot of HP. And some very speedy units. No, Fresh Pro does go with the Rhino. Okay, so it looks like our red player will be having the Supply Specialist. They have Fang and Steel Balls. A good opening hand, especially when you have that extra cash. You can immediately unlock a Mustang and pop it down. Fresh Pro does have the Rhino coming in in a couple of rounds. This is going to be very important. We haven't really seen Rhinos do a huge amount in the early parts of this tournament. They were played to a, a very good degree. But a level 2 Rhino with a very powerful upgrade can just plunge in and take out towers. What you need for that is the mobile beacon and possibly something like the haste module or photon coating. Granted, there's already steel balls unlocked, so it becomes a little bit more difficult to deal with. These snipers aren't going to be able to deal with steel balls very quickly. Oh my gosh, and our red player already does unlock the Mustang and plays them out. Oh my. Okay. Fresh Pro goes with a pretty safe deployment. Just a nice little house right in between the towers. Nothing in the pockets. Looks like our red player is pretty much only playing in the pockets, which means AoE will be Fresh Pro's uh, main form of attack here. Building two or three storm callers right here. One kind of in front of your tower, one here, and then protecting them either with some cheap units like Fang, um, or crawlers is very powerful, especially when fighting over these two uh, pocket lanes, these two little straight lines in between them. Let's see what can happen here. Now these Mustang will do a great job at one, cleaning away some of these Steel Balls HP, so that way the snipers can re-engage, but also Steel Balls take a long time to clear away Mustang. This actually works out very well because the snipers one shot lands, the Mustang finish it off, the next shot lands, it's actually quite good. Mustang. Uh, work in tandem with snipers quite well okay with the tower drop i imagine this has to go in the way of fresh pro especially with another unit of mustang here if you guys didn't notice how many kills are these mustang at 36 
Uh, one unit of Mustang can clear away an infinite number of Fang, as long as the Fang are drip feeding in, just because they have the range to kill the first line of Fang before the next one can make it into range of their, themselves. So, Mustang, really good anti-Fang units. Fresh Pro does narrowly win this, and in fact, actually defeating that headbutt with all three snipers surviving is very important. One, snipers give Alf a lot of XP. Ooh, subsidized uh, Mustang here for a red player is going to be really important. Fresh Pro believes so as well. There's the extra unit of Mustang. Two more Mustang here for Fresh Pro as well. Do we see anything on the flanks? No. I, if I were either of these players... Oh, man. Fresh Pro's Rhino is dropping next turn. I'm sure he wants to get a good upgrade on that. But if I were of either of these players, I'd leave the flank open a little bit more. Uh, in this case, Fresh Pro not deploying anything on this flank. And then maybe in a turn or so, placing a couple of uh, Rhinos followed in by Mustang would be an absolutely devastating flanking force. Missile pops. It does grab a, uh, a steel ball, but definitely not worth it. What's interesting is that this um, this shield is going to be basically useless. I think these Fang will sit inside it for a little while, but level 1 Fang don't have great DPS, so I'd be surprised if they really get anything done. Lots of Mustang here, just shooting at each other. Uh, in fact, actually, I think this right is very much going to go in the way of our red player. That He just had an overwhelming amount of Mustang, and Mustang clear away snipers fairly quickly. I wouldn't say that they're the fastest in the world at it. In fact, these... Uh, marksmen will be able to survive, but the fang should be enough to clear them away. Luckily, the marksmen are shooting at different intervals, so at least they're killing two fang a shot, or one fang a shot, but at different times. But uh, yeah, fang hit quite hard. <laughs> fang really do hit quite hard. 55 damage a shot for these little guys, and when your must or when your marksmen only have a little bit over a thousand HP, it does add up. Now, even a disabled marksman should be able to one-shot these fang, and actually having the fang break up is going to cost them all their lives. Poor little guys. Uh, but I think, oh, this marksman might be able to clean this up, actually. Fang don't have that great of DPS, and as the, uh, oh, wow, the time runs out. Okay, good enough. Basically a draw. I'd call that a draw. I mean, and especially in the finals where things are so close, I love it. Improved fire control for both players. Okay, this extra fire firepower system is, is good, don't get me wrong. I'm just wondering, will the Rhino immediately get the Whirly Durlies? If it grabs the Whirly Durly, it should be able to cut through these Steel Balls very quickly, but there's nothing really to contest uh, the Mustang. Let's see if Fresh Pro does pick up something that can contest the Mustang. Honestly, putting the, that level 2 Rhino on this flank here, it would definitely kill the towers. Then all he would need is something to actually fight this back. Where does Fresh Pro play this improved firepower? It could go... I mean, really, it works best on a Vulcan. If you do put this on a Vulcan and it has the increased damage technology, it can cut through things like Steel Balls very quickly. And then, of course, uh, the rest of these units would fall to a Vulcan. So Fresh Pro might opt to save it until that point. Instead, placing it on these Mustang here. Okay, and unlocking an arc light. Uh, that's another quick tip for any player, really. If you don't have a unit that you specifically want at this very second, you know what works quite well? Just unlock a free unit. Just in case, you never know when you're going to need it. Having an extra free unit is always a good thing. And these level 2 uh, Mustang with the fire control are coming in here, clearing away the others. And in goes this Rhino. Man, it has a lot of HP. I think this will spell disaster, and unfortunately for our red player, the shield does drop as well. I, w I bet he would have loved to have these units actually circle out of it, but it's not quite enough. Fresh Pro's going to deal significant damage here. Not, you know, not to the point of which being a kill, to, to kill, but, you know, a good amount. A nice little cut, a shot across the bow. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Oh... Enhancement module for our red player. I don't know if Fresh Pro needs any of that. Yeah, he opts to skip. I don't. I didn't really think that. Oh my god, I didn't really think that that was useful. But the fortress coming out here is a big surprise to me. Really, just here to kill off this Rhino. Um, there's a cheaper option, but hey, fortresses are just fairly good units. It's a lot of money to put into something, but they're fairly good units. 
I'm surprised Fresh Pro hasn't lined up a couple of Stormcallers right here. And the attack damage increase on these Mustang is going to be very important. And more Crawlers. Okay. If our red player does opt to grab a couple of Vulcan, all of a sudden the majority of Fresh Pro's units would just fall off. I... I don't see... I don't see why players aren't really playing the Vulcan this tournament. I love Vulcans, but hey, such is life. There's not really much you can do about it. And I think Fresh Pro is going to eventually win this uh, Mustang War, as more and more of Fresh Pro's Mustangs are leveled up, uh, and some of them even have some tech on them. And they should be easily able to clear away enemy Mustang. Oh my gosh, this fortress will fall... Bef oh my god, basically at the same time as that rhino that's not something you see happen very often normally fortresses are able to cut through rhinos very quickly but with that fortress falling and the right falling i think that this is going to go in the way of fresh pro in a very big way uh will our red player opt to grab a vulcan next turn we'll see we shall see even if a few tanks wouldn't do very badly here it seems like giants are kind of falling off more and more as the meta continues to develop and this most recent patch but ooh, nano repair kit that, will, that should help this fortress for quite a while. And the extra shield is nice. There isn't really anything to cut through shields very quickly here for Fresh Pro. Uh, grabbing a few hackers. Hackers with shields aren't a bad choice. Especially if he grabs the enhanced control and switches this uh, fortress over. Now, the, the hacker just doesn't have the DPS to deal with this fortress. Especially now that it has the nano repair kit. So... That's very unlikely to happen, but hey, three extra shields. Um, it's a little expensive at first, but that cost does play out over the course of several rounds, so eventually the hackers will actually start to earn you money if there's enough rounds. If you were to play three shields a turn, as compared to playing three hackers with the uh, barrier, eventually, you'll probably never get there, but eventually the math maths out that the hackers will actually start to save you money. We see the attack increase as well for Fresh Pro. We haven't seen really any upgrades coming out for our red player. Opting to recycle a unit and instead grab some more Mustang. Now these level 1 Mustang just aren't going to cut it for very much longer. Especially if we see Mass Stormcaller uh, or even a unit in this backline. Okay, shots are coming down. The hacker should... Yeah, it's just going to come online and start plinking away at the shield. It really won't do much besides just be an extra layer of health. Man, if these marksmen were higher level, I think they'd be doing significantly more. Having a level 2 or level 3 sniper would be great. Man, he does convert both the fortresses. Great job here by Fresh Pro. The hackers have become just so dominant recently, but they're just such powerful units because they can suddenly have the swing. Does Fresh Pro win? Yes, he does. Congratulations to Fresh Pro. Great plays with those hackers. Both players played extremely well. Uh, let's take a look at our leaderboard. Here we have it, our winners on this short little mini tournament. Man, I love the mini tournaments. Fresh Pro, our red player, Rat, and everybody else, congratulations for playing. Thank you so much. Oh, Waladin and Monkst. Hey, I haven't seen those players. I didn't see Monkst actually in the tournament. Good for him. I like that he's still in the game. If you guys don't mind, like and subscribe, and we will see you in the future. Bye. <laughs>